Now, I'm going to share with you a little piece of music, which you probably already have, um, that was on uh, my website. And we're just going to hum through the melody together. And we will be singing the top melody where it splits in two. Just sing the top with me, nice and soft. And we will be in a different key. We'll go quite much lower. All right? Now, how do I admit people as I'm sharing my screen? I, oh, I need to hire someone to do that. Okay, uh, I hope I can do it. Let's go. That's your first note, and let's sing through it uh, gently together. That's our first note. Let's go. Quite a big jump here, right? One more time. Second bit, so we're going from the middle of the first line. Oh, let's go together. Oh. Next bit. repeated twice with a slight variation the second time round from the beginning your first note let's do the whole thing ah. going to uh, stop at for now people are still coming in sorry um, and I'll tell you a tiny little bit about this song Mike Wise sung the most famous version of the song actually the famous version of the song that I'm sure a lot of you know not just people in my choir and I would like us before we go any further with this tune to remind ourselves or to introduce it to others how the tune that everyone knows goes. It goes like this. It's the same text, but as you read in the description, this is the popular tune. goes like this. I see some of you singing. Hands up! Yes! Oh, lots of you, lots of you, lots of you. It's probably one of the most famous um, Russian songs that you would hear a company of people coming together and singing. It'll be one of the first choices. Now, this is the less known and the folk melody. Let's go through it again. I think most of us are here now. Um, this is our note. Let's go. Beautiful folk melody. And... Stenka Razin. There's a big part of Russian history um, about Stenka Razin. All I'll tell you is that uh, there are dozens of songs still being sung in Russia about Stenka Razin, Russian art songs and Russian folk songs, and this is one of them. 
and you can read about him. It's just a fascinating character, freedom-loving, um, sarvi galava, as we say in Russia, tear your head out. Such a desperate, crazy character um, going against everything. So we're going to look at text here. This is Stenka Razin, our hero, uh, kind of describing what happened to him. Yeah. Oi, um, oi, ni vi chor to li ni vi chor. So for Cyrillic, go to the top line. For Latin, for transliteration, go to the second line. You see it there? Yeah, let's go together. Oi, ni vi chor to li ni vi chor. It's not yet evening, not yet evening. Vichor or Vichor in modern Russian is evening. Let's sing that bit. We'll do that. Rough kind of familiarizing ourselves with the whole song like that, phrase by phrase, bit by bit. Next line middle of your top line мне малым i'm going to say it in the rhythm of the song мне малым мало спалось one more time мне малым мало спалось мне me малым little malo very kind of it's kind of a play of words very little little by little spalos slept i slept very little sing it together мне let's go мне малым мало спалось rewind to the beginning we're going to connect that yeah first two phrases your first note and oi ni vichor Next line in text is very similar. Oi, мне малым мало спалось. Together. Oi, мне малым мало спалось. Let's sing it. Oi and. Oi, мне line va sne vi di la sa again va sne vi di la sa now for newcomers you have a little apostrophe there above certain after certain consonants like mne uh, like n yeah, or like, uh, oh, I can't show you here, or like xia right here at the end. It indicates a soft consonant, so instead of sa, we sing xia. Instead of la, we go la. Instead of ne, we go, uh, instead of ne, we go ne. So n, n, l, l, s, s, m, n. You hear the difference in pronouncing these um, consonants in Russian, yeah? Just something to be aware of if you want to practice your Russian. We're going to sing that last bit. Um, va, sne, vi. So that's your last four bars, four measures on the second line. Va, find this? Yeah? Let's go. Va, sne, vi, de, la, sa. So we stretch vi and we stretch de, la, sa. Right? Like in many, many lyrical songs, um, Russian lyrical songs, we stretch a word sometimes um, over two or three or four or ten notes and break a word and stretch it and stretch it. Okay, we know that whole section now. Let's go from the very beginning. Oi, slowly, let's go. Oi, Не видела 
Alicia. Yeah, you're very young. Let me see your faces. How is that? How are you coping? Uh, hello, hello, hello. You know what? I'm not reading your chat. It's a bit too much for me to cope with. So if you have any questions, switch yourself on now and ask me. We can, you know, we can chat for a minute or two. If you have anything to say, anyone? What's the, what's the meaning of that? Sorry, what's the meaning of that last phrase? The va right. Um. Ah. Uh, yeah. I forgot to translate. Во сне in the dream виделася. So I saw in Russia we we don't say we dream we see something in a dream. I saw it in my dream, right? So he's just saying I slept very little, uh, and this is what I had, what I what I dreamed about, right? That's all we hear in the first verse. I also saw Duncan being switched on. Yeah, what do you want to say, Duncan? Are um, with these songs are the tenses in the past, the present, the future, in general? They can change within one verse, within <laughs> one song. In, right. <laughs> uh, in, in the Russian language, we jump with tenses quite a lot. and past oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, but in this particular verse, it's past tense. Right. Yeah, it's past tense. Yeah, it's kind of... Also, it's kind of, I slept myself. There is this kind of reversed, uh, what's the word? There is an English term for this one. It's reflexive. What's reflexive? Reflexive. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's that all over the place here. It's quite, you know, folky, that text. Yeah. I'd like us to sing through the second bit. Now, uh, when this version is sung, the second bit only happens twice in the song after the first verse at, and at the very end. And uh, as far as I understand, the original version of the song that was recorded in the 1880s, the one I mentioned in my description, um, there was just one person, one old man, who sang that song and who these um, collectors uh, recorded, and that was his version. It doesn't mean that the song wasn't sung in other ways and in different combinations and all these repeats in different places. So, as always, a folk song is open to variations and interpretations. What we will do today, we will sing that second bit only after the first verse. So here comes the second bit. So we finished. Ta -da 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 -da, right? So we are at the end of our second line. And then you see bar 17. If you don't follow, uh, if you don't read music, if you could follow where we are with text, that should be helpful. So from here, we go straight up. Let's sing that line together. I'm singing the top melody. Yeah, we can sing harmony line later if we have if we have time. Let's go together. changes goes up and if you want to embellish it with harmonies which wasn't necessarily the case in the original linear interpretation of that song yeah no harmonies really um you can do this so da, 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 again from the beginning of that line uh, So ta da da, and from here we go ta da 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 da. I'll do it one more time. So we're looking at the last bar on the one before last line here. Oh yeah, it says oi there. Ta, let's go. Ta da. Da, 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 da. Oh, da. Bro, we want 
to go. Right, follow me. I'm going for the top line, top melody in that second half of the whole tune, uh, bar 17, the last two lines of our music. Da, let's go. section sing a low melody here let's look at text ready it's the same it's the same as the same just one little bit is different Oi, mnie mali, mala, spalos. so you recognize that um, line from the previous line it's exactly the same so I'll do it with music Oi, let's go Oi, mnie had very little sleep. One more time. Oh, sorry. One more time. My mistake. Next bit. We had it too. Uh, uh, in my dream, I saw, yeah, in my dream, saw itself, yeah, reflective. Uh, one more time. The next bit will be new to you. Listen just the text. Oh, hoy, buta. I'll do it one more time. Oi, buta kohoj moj, vaharahanoj. Let's sing it. Oi, buta kohoj moj, vaharahanoj. Oi is oi, buta is if. Koń is a horse, moi is my, varanoi is dark black. Yeah? Let's see what happens to the to the horse, to the koń. Razygralsia padam noi. One more time. Razygralsia padam noi. Let's sing it. Your note. comes from igrat to play. Rozegralsia doesn't necessarily mean just playful playing. It can be just a bit kind of a... It's energetic, definitely. And in this case, the horse is kind of going crazy. It's just going, ooh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit more than just playful. It's, um, it can be a bit aggressive. And we learn from the rest of the song that... Uh, and we won't sing through the whole ballad, obviously, today, that uh, the horse um, throws him off the back and the hat, um, the strong winds come and uh, 
tear the hat off his head, Stein Karazin's, uh, his black furry hat, you know, Cossack hat, off his head, and then something that is not usually sung in the popular version, uh, then what happens, uh, his um, arrows fall off his uh, shoulder and they just fall on the ground into the grass. So his arrows, he loses his weapon. And he asks an old man, uh, Yisaul, which is a higher rank uh, Cossack, uh, a wise man, can you interpret that dream for me? And the old man says to him, the dream means that you will lose your head. And in Russian, uh, you, will, you will be dead, basically, very soon. It's a dark dream. And, uh, and all your followers, uh, all followers uh, your supporters will run away, will betray you, which kind of did in, in, in history. Uh, and that's in the longer version of that, uh, of that whole song, which is often not sung fully. And if you've checked out that uh, full version of the old, uh, wait, wait, where is it? I hope you can see this one. Can you see the old one now? Are you seeing the old one? That's 1936, yeah? You see how many verses there are. They sing nine verses and it's like very full text. And even that text is not complete. See how much there is. Lots with repeats, two times, da, 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 da. 10 verses and all your Cossacks um, uh, like these arrows they'll fall and they will run away so it's quite a dark dream and um, this is what happened to Sten Karazin we're going to bring the whole song uh, together not the whole song the whole verse okay ready any questions before we launch into the song and imagine being that Stenka ready 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 okay let's do it let me show you that uh, here is the fragment. So what we'll sing now, we will sing, oh yeah, I don't know what I'm showing, this one, yeah? Are you seeing the right music now in front of you? The one we've learned, yeah. I yes. have two documents open here. So we will sing the first verse all the way to the end with the repeat, repeating the last two lines as it says here in the music, and then we'll go back to the beginning and let's experience it in a kind of more full way. Even though the text will be the same, we sing the first verse only, let's Imagine we're singing that ballad, yeah? We're singing a long ballad that is um, 10, 10, 15 minutes long. We won't do that, but uh, come close to it. Let's go. Не видела. 
that? What do you think? Now, those of you who know the the um, the popular tune composed by Jana Bichevskaya, a famous famous Russian singer, um, what do you think? <laughs> Hugh, you're saying something, but we can't hear you. Switch your cell phone. And Isabel next. Hugh first. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. I like you it. Know? Yes, it's good. Wait. You then Isabel then Mark and then we'll stop. Okay, Hugh. Yeah, I like it. It's it's uh, it's different but and very good. So Which like one do you prefer, or you like both? I like both. Good. The other others very easy to sing in many ways, but I I think uh, I think this one has uh, um, yeah I like this one too. Yeah, great, Isabel. You wanted to say something, Isabel. Where are you? I, I love this melody. But for a non-professional and not a choir uh, uh, every day participant, it's quite difficult. This the second one. The yes, but one. I love it. I, I, I it's more or like follow. My difficulty is that my reading of Russian is a little bit old, but the transliteration uh, kills me. You know what? Um, sing la la la, <laughs> and if you need to learn text, do it later. Okay. Enjoy the tune, yeah? That's okay. the way to do it. Thank yeah, you. Uh, we had Mark and then Michael and then we stop. Yeah, Mark first. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, I like both versions. I mean, we obviously did the, the first, the, the more modern version in the choir. But this has got a rather soulful quality to it, I think. Whether it's it's partly the tempo, but it's also partly that melody, which is, uh, there's a kind of feeling of impending, not doom, but, but tragedy in the music which which i think comes across melodically wow. and rhythmically great observation thanks mark great um who did yes. I michael where are you yeah uh, yeah i'm just going to say um mark was reading my mind there i was going to say all that and he said it so eloquently the one thing i would say is that if there's a piece of music a song a short song that i know and i like that's embedded and and so the new one is always or the new one to learn is always a bit tricky to start with but this has got such a haunting melody i i think i just treat it as two different songs and uh, love both of them it's great lovely yeah that's kind of my approach too michael yeah i saw eve eve say it quick quick oh um yeah i just feel like uh this one that's the original has more like a russian orthodox feel because of the the intervals between the notes and i knew the bichevsky one and it was hard to let go of it at first but now i realize even though i thought that was and I, it's very soulful i thought it was oh so russian folky it's like no it's actually a little more like western maybe influenced by 60s you know folky folk ethnography things from the west uh, yeah certainly the the new version of the melody um Ой, то не вечер, да не вечер, мне мало мало спалось. See how much harmony change there is right in the melody, in the melody itself. Мне мало мало спалось. Ой, да вас не привиделось. So it's one, four, three. Yeah, all these more modern harmonies, they're beautiful too. I love that tune. I actually sang it myself and, you know, performed it many times. I love it. Can we sing it one more? Can we sing the, can we go back to singing now? It's lovely to talk, actually. It's, it's beautiful to hear your impressions and all that. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that you like both. That's kind of what I think. What I'd like uh, us to do uh, would be to sing with the choir. Just one verse. Did anyone, did everyone hear the, the choral version I posted on my page? It's long, it's like nine, nine verses. I think they sing almost the full text. It's a seven and a half minute file. And when I, yeah, and when I listened, I was just amazed. And that's one of my favorite choirs in, in Russia. My mother was studying at university where it's based, but when she joined the university choir, Sveshnikov, uh, already left and then he died so the 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 kind of the person after whom this choir is uh called the sveshnikov choir and uh yeah and they're an amazing choir and they they were something like 300 people at the time when my mother was there 
beautiful choir. So um, what I want us to do is just to sing through what we know already one more time with music in front of us. And then I'll play you just the very beginning of the choir. It'll be in a different key, but it's the, it's the same tune more or less than what we sing. So we can experience singing kind of in harmonies and going kind of being one of these choir members just for a minute. Okay, so back to our file one more time. And then we will sing with the choir. Okay, let's go. Uh, in fact, uh, let's go in this into this key. Yeah, let's go in this key. And just for a change. Oi! All right, let's start. Oi! Near the an experiment i don't know if i've done that before i'll share i don't do you think i can share the screen with the music and play uh the choral file i'll try that uh let's see and you'll give me a nod if it's working so i'll do this share screen and if it doesn't work we'll just have to hum with the choir and then see if i play uh if I play my file. Can you hear that and see it at the same time? All right, okay. Uh, there is an introduction in the choir and then you can join them when you know what to do. Or oh, just listen, it's just gorgeous. Uh, let's go. Oh. 
want to keep singing. It's amazing, isn't it? And I really like uh, choral arrangements of folk songs. Um, you know, very, very often they are done in a classical way, so you actually hear a classical kind of a classical piece. This is somewhere in the middle. It's sung classically, but the, in the arrangement they use, you know, some interesting intervals, and it's not. It, that, it sounds beautiful. It works. It works. Do listen to it. It's on my website, on my page. Um, and by the way, if you're new to these sessions, all the sessions you can revisit all of them. Everything is kept. All the information, all the sheet music, all the files are kept on the past sessions page. It's a separate page, and there is a link to it at the very top of the usual our usual. Well, let's go. Thank you very much for joining us today. Next time there'll be a folk song as well. I don't know yet what. For the Yiddish session on Monday, we are singing Yoshke Fortavek, a song that has uh, not only Greek roots, but it's questionable which roots that song actually has. Originally a mixture of um, histories and stories.